Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless God in this place. We honor him. We adore him on today because he's worthy, he's good, and he's faithful. Hallelujah. We serve a sovereign God and king. And we thank him for rescuing us. Hallelujah. We thank him for saving our lives. Hallelujah. Anybody thankful for that Hallelujah. this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It wasn't until Moses had to step away that the, that the Israelites cried out for God. He had to step away in order for them to realize that, hey, I got to do my own groaning and moaning to get God to save me and deliver me. But I know after that, that they had grateful hearts. And this morning, whatever it is that you need to be saved from, whatever you need to be delivered from, and even if you've already been delivered from it, you need to give God glory. You need to give God praise. You need to honor him because it is due him. Hallelujah. So you can't save people that don't know that they need to be saved. But I'm so glad that I serve a God that saved me. Hallelujah. I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore, very stained within, but the master of the sea, hallelujah, he reached down and rescued me. Because I'm telling y'all, I was way, way down here. But I'm so glad that I serve a God that felt the need to rescue me over 2,000 years ago before I even knew I need saving he saved me so I'm glad about it I'm excited about it hallelujah hallelujah and I'm excited for you hallelujah I don't know what you came in here with but I guarantee you if you just trust God trust God like the Israelites did. Trust God. Like Daniel did in the lion's den. Trust God. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Trust God. Hallelujah. He will save. He will deliver. So I thank him for rescuing my life. I thank him for throwing me the life jacket when I was drowning. I thank him. Hallelujah. And I promise God, I ain't going back. I ain't going back. Hallelujah. He's too good. I ain't going back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had surgery. I'm just going to share this little testimony. I had some nodules on my throat, and I had surgery. Didn't want to have surgery, but I had surgery. And when I got up to sing, I couldn't sing. I went from a soprano to kind of a rustic, okay? People was telling me, oh, it's just a unique voice. I'm like, I don't know about that. I don't know about unique, but I promise God, if you heal me, I will forever give your name glory. I will forever sing your praise. I will worship you, whether I'm feeling good, whether I'm feeling bad. If you heal me, and he did just what he said, hallelujah. So I'm glad about Some people say it don't take all that. Well, I'm telling you, if you knew my story, I don't know your story, but it do take all of that. Hallelujah. Because we serve a mighty God, a good God, a faithful God, a healing God, a delivering God. Hallelujah. 
so he can rescue you. Wherever you need him right now in your life, he can rescue you. He can heal you. He can deliver you. He can set you free. Whatever's got you bound, you coming out of it. You coming out of it. Hallelujah. You're free in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So I dare you just to take God with you wherever you go because that's the spirit right there. You're free. You're free. You're delivered. You're healed. So we thank him. And we want you to join in with us this morning. It's a simple and easy song to just thank him for rescuing our lives. And we're not going to go back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Just begin to lift your hands and worship him. Begin to honor him. Begin to thank him for rescuing you, for saving you. Hallelujah. 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 We give your name glory. The song says, You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm there. Make it personal for a second. You have healed my life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You have healed my life. And I'm never going back. You can put your own stuff right there. You have healed my life. Yes, you have healed my life. And I'm never. Come on, say it. You 
Church, say it.
tell the enemy no. Come on. And I'm never going back. See, you have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. Come on, catch it. You have rescued my life. And I'm never, and I'm never going back. Come on. See, you have rescued my life. 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 And I'm never, and I'm never going back. Hallelujah. 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 could have been another way. And he chooses us. He don't have to save us. He don't have to deliver us. He don't have to heal us. God chooses his people. But in order to be chosen, in order to be delivered, we have to realize that we're in a place and we need deliverance. We need healing. We need saving. We need for our minds to be changed. We have to be in a place of need. But I'm so glad that God got, I don't know how many life jackets. Because he ain't just throw one for depression. He ain't just throw one for healing. He ain't just. Come on now. He had to throw a bunch of them. It ain't like when I got when I got the one life jacket, that was it. God is a faithful, faithful God. And as long as you keep living. He's going to continue to be faithful. He makes a whole lot of promises in, in his word. And I'm so glad that he keeps every last one of them. I could stay right there all day. Because he's good. Yes, Lord. He's good. And when you think about where God has rescued you from, he's a tears of joy. Because God is good. And I don't share a lot of testimonies and stuff. I give God glory. I give him praise. And I worship him. But I don't share a lot of things. when you've been delivered from lust and hatred towards people because of how they've hurt your family and depression that's why when you all when I see people get delivered I get excited I get excited. And when you've lost people that you thought God shouldn't have took so early, when well, you can appreciate God's work, 
regardless if it means you losing someone when you can appreciate that and get over your own feelings that's why my testimony is this morning and I'll never go back and I'm never Come on, if you believe that, come on, give God some praise. Glory. Come on, if y'all come in agreement with that testimony, come in agreement with the testimony, the confession that I would not go back. Come on. I, I'm just asking you to participate in praise for a second. Hallelujah. Listen, it should be, a, if you scared to breathe, glory be God, you ought to be clapping your hands, glory. Let your praise go. I said, let your praise go. I said, let your praise go. Quit worrying about what somebody thinks about you. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. By the clapping of your hands, I will shout with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. God is so good. Oh, my God. Listen, you may have your seats in the presence of the, of the Lord. I believe the Lord has, has, has. Definitely encourage. Howard, oh, well, Tim, my bad, Tim. Can you grab that box right in front of my desk? For those of you that don't know, my name is Sean Scott. My lovely wife, beautiful wife, Melanie Scott, she is en route. But we are your senior pastors here at Renovation Church, and we, we just want to say thank you all for worshiping with us on today. Do we have any first-time visitors today? Do we have any first-time visitors? Come on, let's give God praise. One, two, hallelujah. We give God praise for our first-time visitors. Um, I know you're probably already registered if you're sitting in the sanctuary, but if you have not had an opportunity to do so, you can easily just text the word Sunday to the number 931-283-2813. If you are viewing us online and you are viewing us for the first time, we want to definitely welcome you. Let's welcome those that are viewing online. Give God praise. We thank you so much for stopping that feed and allowing us to be able to encourage you, hopefully, through the word of God. And hopefully, worship has ministered. Let's give God praise for the worship on today. Come on, let's give God some praise. Renovation worship, man. They are, I put them up, up against anybody. Hallelujah. But I give God praise for our worship team. But, um. I'm really excited um, today. Before we move forward, we have, uh, if you have not had the opportunity to get connected or take the next step to our RQ growth track, we want to encourage you to do so. We've had uh, a few, maybe a, a few people uh, finish growth track, crack, growth tra <laughs> not crack, you said growth track. But anyway, <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Now calm down, we're in church, relax. Somebody say relax. If you complete a growth track, would you just raise your hand so we can just recognize those that have finished growth track? Let's give God praise. Now, I don't know, normally we don't do this, but we want to definitely encourage those that are not in growth track. Uh, I'm going to give away uh, today for, the, for those that finished the growth track uh, this year a uh, free t shirt. So uh, I have uh, some t shirts here that I'm going to bless. But not only am I going to bless them, but I'm going to bless the first-time visitor. How about that? Let's give God praise for that. Y'all see me? I'm over here. Yeah, yeah she, she, she like, uh, I don't, I tell you what, uh, I don't like asking people what size they are in front of people, so I'm going to let you whisper over there to these two individuals right here and ask them what size they were so that you can bless them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just being considerate. Somebody said, be considerate. Glory be to God. And our first-time guest, we got our first-time guest here, my brother right here. 
And I believe my brother right here raised his hand. So, uh, Tim, I think you have my, my man right there with, with the jacket, I believe. So, let's give God praise for those. For those of you that are wondering what Growth Track, RC Growth Track is where we really get to communicate who we are, our DNA, and ultimately our goal and our vision. But also we get to learn something about you as well. And the Bible talks about we must uh, know those that labor among us. And if we're going to be uh, partners to renovate people's lives through the love of Christ, it's, I believe it's paramount that we get to understand who we are and what we function great at. Amen? So um, that's what RC Growth Track is. That's so we can accelerate what the Lord wants to do in your life and how you can make a difference to other people through what God has placed in you. Amen? So we give God praise again. Let's give God praise again for the RC Growth Track graduates as well as the first-time guests on today. If... Um, if you are in the need of prayer, you don't necessarily have to wait to an altar call. Maybe you're on your job. Maybe you're, you know, on, at your business or even at home and you need prayer. We have made it very easy for you to be ministered to through prayer by just texting the word pray for me. One word, pray for me to the number 931-283-2813. If you received a card when you came in. I want you to please raise your hand if you received a card. You should Every single person should have received a card. And that card, on the back of that card, it has the information that you need in order to help accelerate if it's the ministry of prayer, if it's to get connected, um, to go, uh, take the next steps in growth track, if it's uh, to plan a visit for someone that you would like to be a part of what's going on. Um, and if you would like to give, you know, sometimes we miss the opportunity. Maybe we, you know, we just miss the moment to give in this moment. But you can also give at your home in your separate places by following the instructions that's simply on that card that says that you can give generously wherever you may be. So we give God praise for digital technology that allows us to be able to be safe and to be uh, convenient. Glory be to God. So let's give God praise for those venues that we are able to function in to make sure that we can serve and keep people connected. That's very important, especially with the season that we are in. Um, some will call it a uh, pandemic. Uh, but I heard a saying from a prayer room, and they said that you wasn't quarantined, but you were being incubated. And, and literally what, what's, being, what's being suggested is that maybe this was a time for you to get you together. Because sometimes you can be running so hard and you can be stretched so much, so thin that you never get to focus on what your weaknesses and what your strengths are. So sometimes, you know, you know let's rearrange our perspective and take this as an opportunity to let God incubate what he has placed in you. Whether that's through prayer, whether that's through study, discipleship, some type of, of venue to where we can increase what God has planted in us. Amen. Do y'all believe that? Do y'all come in agreement with that on today? So we believe God for this season, even though that it has certain aspects of it that's very negative. But we go, we're a people of God. The Bible said that we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. So that means we have to be intentional with our thought process. With our perspective. So with that being said, we're going to get ready to prepare our hearts and minds to give. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be able to sow into the kingdom of heaven. Well, you say, Sean, why, why are you so excited? That means God entrusted me with a seed. And you know what? God has entrusted us all with a seed. I'm going to give you a quick testimony that God has been so gracious to be uh, towards us as a body here at Renovation Church. We've been blessed highly beyond measures. And, and not only did we at one point raise like, you know, 20 some thousand dollars in 66 days. But we had favor with contractors. We got business owners in the house that have blessed us and sold into us from the right choice to Donnie Handyman to positive images to all kind. Of, it's, it's all kind of gifts and talents and businesses. But uh, we had a company that was able, uh, little River House, Smokehouse, Barbecue grill. I mean, that's a lot of stuff that's going on. God is doing some great things because even during the pandemic, there was businesses established. Look, there, there was businesses established. So I'm saying that to say that this is great ground. I'm not going to say good because I believe that's an insult to grace. 
But we are in great ground. But not only that, just getting to, you know, I was, I was, I, you know, I started thinking about all, it was some other uh, celebrations. But the thing that I want to highlight is when we bought this building, we had a situation where we got it uh, assessed for the air conditioning process. We got four, I mean, two four-term units. And they said everything was good. It was like, cool, boom. So they, the people that was previously owners of the building, they had a credit with a um, AC company, a heat and air conditioning company. And, you know, we was like, all right, cool. They're going to come install it. So this company came out to install this core piece, whatever it's called, some core something, okay? I'm not a heat and AC guy, but some of you may relate. But when they came, he said, I'm, I hate to tell you, but your heat exchange is cracked. And you might as well just buy a whole nother unit. Because that's how much the heat exchange was going to cost. I said, what? I said, if that was the case, hold on. Weren't you, your company, the same company that assessed the building before we bought it? You know, I got a little business sense. So I was like, if this was the case, wouldn't it have been right for, you know, you to tell this to the previous owner that this has to be taken care of before you try to put this in a contract of purchase? I don't know. He was like, it was on the other side, and we just didn't see it. I said, well, that ain't going to sit well with me. I said, we need to have a conversation. <laughs> so, you know, a month and a half goes by, and I follow up, and, and uh, they they said, oh, you haven't got a phone call? I'm like, no. So they said, well, we call, let me talk to my, because I talked to the, the guy that was responsible for selling and, you know, all that good stuff. And he said, let me talk to the people over me. And he came and he called me back. He said, Mr. Scott, I want to let you know that, listen, we're going to install the core, which to me that wasn't good news because that doesn't do any good if the heat exchange is cracked because the heat exchange releases carbon monoxide that's not healthy for anybody. But he said, not only that, we're going to replace you a brand new heat exchange and we're going to bring the whole unit up to code. Because there's an electrical box that has to be at a certain level. He said, and Mr. Scott, y'all, oh, Renovation Church would not have to pay for nothing. Because they was trying to get me to spend $10,000 to buy another unit. But the point I'm making is that grace and favor is on what God has us responsible for stewarding in this season. And he's going to move in so many different ways. So all I'm saying is I believe that we are in some great ground. Whatever God has purpose in your heart to sow, hey, let the Lord do what he needs to do in you to give freely as what God has purpose in you. If you uh, don't have a place that you feel that's faithful or that you can place that you call home, we encourage you. We teach the Bible. We love the Bible. Our, our mission to renovate lives to the love of Christ. Our vision is renovate lives to the love of Christ. But we, our mission to do that is through loving God and loving people. So I'm telling you this. I believe you will be loved. To, to the standpoint to where, you know what, I can see God in that. Amen. Hey, I, I, I can't be God, but I, hopefully we can do some type of expression of love that shows that God is in this place. And we can guarantee you that. Amen. So uh, all I'm saying is it's very simple for you to sow to what Renovation Church is doing. You can text the word R.C. Clarsville to the number 77977. And that's an easy way for you to sow by texting to give. Or you can just go to the website. You say, well, I, I don't get all that. Go to the website, just hit give. You can do it that way. And it do the same way that you would if you would text the word R.C. Clarksville to the number 77977. They do have someone walking around with a basket if you would rather put it in a basket. And we have allowed that process as well. Y'all ready to pray? Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for the awesome opportunity to sow into the kingdom of heaven. God, you have called us uh, a steward, and as we have stewarded our finances, God, you've allowed us the opportunity to sow into the kingdom of heaven. And Father, I thank you right now for overflow financially in the homes of your people. God, I thank you right now for favor on their jobs, Lord. I thank you, Father, for giving them creative ideas and business models, God, that allow them to break the generational curses, God, that may have been set places in uh, different people's homes. But, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're allowing our hearts and minds to be better with what we have now. 
Because we know, God, you've given us opportunity. I bind now the spirit of poverty, God. The mindset that thinks and projects that I don't have enough. But, God, you have given us all things. And we will do what you have instructed us to do, God, to be intentional to give because you have given us the power to get there. And, Lord, we love you right now, God, as we function in the ability to establish your covenant in the earth through our finances. We thank you in advance for the victory in our lives and in our homes. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody shout amen. Come on, somebody shout amen. If you believe that, shout amen one more time. And again, those that are viewing us online, the same instructions follow with the digital ability to uh, the text to give. You can text the word RC Clarksville to the number 77977. Well, glory be to God. Hey, I'm excited because I believe that there is a word of the Lord. Are y'all excited about the word of the Lord on today? Amen. Glory be to God. But before we do that, I need you to stand up on your feet. Because we're getting ready to do our declaration. The book of Joel says that when you decide a thing, to declare it. So we're going to declare some in this place on today. Amen. Amen. Well, glory be to God. I want you to do me a favor and repeat after, after me. My worth is far greater than my circumstances. My worth is far greater than my past. My worth is going to renovate the world around me. My worth is great because Jesus is constantly renovating me. Who I am is not determined by my failures. Who I am becoming is a result of God's love. I am a renovator. I am a renovator. I am a renovator. Come on, let's give God praise for your worth on today. Hallelujah. I tell you what, I am going to um, read the scriptures that we read last week because we didn't get past verse 1. <laughs> and it, we're coming from Joshua chapter 6, Joshua chapter 6, and it reads, Now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go out or in. But in the wait, but the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho, its king, and all its strong warriors. You and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to march around the, the town seven times with the priest blowing the horn. When you hear the priest give one long blast on the ram's horn, have all the people shout as loud as they can. Then the walls of the town will collapse and the people can charge straight into the town. Father, we thank you right now for allowing us to move aggressively to hear what thus says the Lord. We pray that you would just have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. amen. Come on, somebody shout amen. This is what I want you to do with your mask on before you take your seat. I want you to say this to somebody next to you. And, <laughs> and I want you to say this, the why behind the strategy. The why behind the strategy. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Glory be to God. Um, you know, we, we were intentional about a few things last week and, um, man, I just want to say this, like, I'm super excited. I'm always excited. People always say, oh, stop, you know, I'm super excited, but, uh, I'm probably passionate, you know, um, so every now and then I have to tell my wife or my kids, listen, I'm, I'm not, it's not, I'm not hollering at you. I'm just passionate about what I say, you know, uh, you know. You know, <laughs> you know when it's a holler because it'll come with a consequence or punishment. <laughs> but no, seriously, when I'm passionate, you know, and, and you know when you're passionate about things, you you kind of get a little, you may come off coming a, aggressive. And uh, every now and then, I have to give people that that little, you know, listen, I'm not getting coming at you. I'm just I'm passionate. 
And, um, you know, while we've been dealing with this crossing over sermon series, we, we have been, uh, I believe, communicating it in passionately, uh, but also understanding that I believe God has given us orders how to function in this new place. Not this place particularly, but geographically, I mean, spiritually, um, you know, physically, mentally. I mean, we had a different place that we have ever been, probably in, if, if all of us can testify in all our lives. From um, governmental, from, you know, environmental, <laughs> I mean, from health-wise. I mean, we're just in a very awkward place. And a lot of things we have to be sensitive to when com we're communicating to, but we also have to be mindful that God is still on an assignment. But not only is God on an assignment, um, when we understand how God functions, when, let me just give you a simple um, idea of what I'm saying is, God has a thought out plan before we even step into the, what we are at, what we're wanting to do in life. He's, he's already thought our end bef before our beginning. And when I say that, I just mean that I think sometimes we, uh, <laughs> we, we undercut God by not lending to him for more wisdom because we have a, just an inkling of an understanding that he's responsible for our end. And what we do a lot of times is we'll do a lot of things without even you know, <laughs> insinuating or saying, God, what do you think about this? Or, or God, what's your idea about this thing? Because I know you know my end before my beginning. To the standpoint that I believe that there's some extra icing that God puts on the cake. There's some great things that God does just because he loves to know that my son or my daughter is, is inquiring my my guidance before he just steps out and do, does a thing. Oh, uh, uh, I, I believe, you know, the Bible talks about acknowledge him in all, all your ways, you know. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and I will direct you. But, but the thing about it is that sometimes we make a path, then we start to acknowledge. <laughs> I, I know, man, it's going to be one or two claps. I, I know. I get it. I get it. But the thing about it is, is uh, we really set ourselves up. One of the things that we've been talking about is how we get to really set ourselves up for a 100% uh, percent percentile, successful percentile rate when we inquire God first. And what we see that's going on with Joshua is Joshua doesn't make a move until he gets the instruction of the Lord. He shows us this. You know, a lot of times I, <laughs> I must admit, you know, me, myself, I'm just talking about me, y'all. I hadn't hit the, the perfection role. Um, you know, I, I, I'm still away from perfection. And, and one of those things that I have been flawed to do in times past is I didn't inquire the Lord for instruction. He gave me a word, but he didn't give me instruction. You know, you can get a word that says, go for it. But what does go for it look like? <laughs> you know, and sometimes I say, you know, I, 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 what I'm understanding and learning is sometimes we need to inquire God for wisdom for instruction. And when you inquire God for wisdom for instruction, it's amazing how God will give you instruction. But this is what I'm learning about instruction. Instruction would never conflict scripture when you're dealing with the Lord, the God of Israel, the God of Abel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus is daddy. <laughs> it's my daddy, she said. It, the instruction would not be contrary from scripture. Matter of fact, God talks about how scripture will, will help furnish you, thoroughly furnish you, he says, to equip you for every work. Now, remember, we're talking about the work of the Lord. We're not talking about our preference. Because when you start dealing with preference, then I get to say I want everything to look purple. The people, the place, and the things. 
when God does not, doesn't give us that, op- he, does, he doesn't give us that much power. And the reason I say that is because we are living a lively stone for the God, for God, for the, for the king of Israel. You, you say, Sean, what do you mean that? Because God created us. But he created us to be expressions of who he is. We're made after the, the image and likeness of God. Because we're made out of, out of the image and likeness of God, he has some say-so of what that looks like. Okay? And what, what I believe what we have done in our paradigm, if you will, is we've been very lackadaisical in seeking the instruction of the Lord when it comes to our life and the lives of those we are responsible for. Okay? Why is this important? Because now it takes me out of individuality, individuality, and it puts me into saying, okay, God, I'm your son, I'm your daughter. Father, what are you trying to get me to understand? Okay? So uh, we, 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 because I'm, I'm kind of expedited into a place because I, I got some, some great inspiration, I believe, that's going to have some information that can really ex- accelerate us to a place. So one of the things that we ended off with last week is that when we operate our lead by fear, it causes us to lock people out or lock God out. And we said the reason why we came with this thought that we will lock God out when we operate by fear is because we don't know what that looks like. And sometimes when we don't know what something looks like, you know, because we like to have control. You don't have to raise your hand. My God, if it unfolds the way I didn't perceive it to be, I can't handle this. Somebody, this don't work well with my anxiety. I got to get up out of here because this ain't looking like I wanted to look. But, but, but what we've noticed about this thought right here is this worked for the, well, I wouldn't necessarily say it worked for the benefit of the children of God, but because God moved uh, aggressively for the children of Israel, it caused fear in their enemy. Okay? And sometimes the enemy doesn't have a vendetta against you. The enemy is afraid of what you can do once you come into relationship or contact with him. Okay? Sometimes the enemy want to be set free, but he doesn't want to walk into something that he don't understand. He doesn't want to walk into something. And I say the enemy, I just mean the person that is not saved. I ain't talking about the devil. Because, you know, we got a few enemies, and the devil is just one of them. Sometimes it's our own self. Okay? And sometimes it's the unknown. It's, it's what we just don't see. You know, we walk by faith, not by what? So we have to be reminded constantly that sometimes you just ain't going to see it with the physical eyesight that you are accustomed to seeing things. So this is why it's so important for us to understand instruction and how Joshua was so so effective about um, being intentional to follow the instruction of the Lord. So it says this in verse 1 of how the, uh, the the people, they were fearful of what God was doing, so they locked everybody out where they couldn't get in or they couldn't get out. And we said that sometimes what happens when we operate by fear that we can be attached to people and we can be holding people hostage because we're fearful of what we don't know or what we cannot control but not not even realizing that the deliverer is coming God is coming to do some new things in our lives and those that are tied to us but because of our fear we lock up everything and we put up these walls we put up these walls, well, I don't know what these walls may be, but sometimes these walls may expose something about me that I don't want anybody else to know. So that wall can sometimes keep me from walking in a place of deliverance because the only way I can get freed from deliverance, as Pastor Priscilla was saying earlier, was that if, well, basically the only way you can be delivered is if truth enters your life. See, truth sets you free. Most of the time we're bound by something that's false. Do y'all hear me? Or uh, 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 misperceive. You have, hey, have you ever had a misunderstanding? And that misunderstanding kept you bound in a place that you didn't have access to because you misunderstood it. But then when you came to the truth, what it was really was, you got freedom and you was able to move forward. Well, that's how it is with our relationship with God. Sometimes we are bound by certain things that we have not dealt with the root of it is. And when that thing flares up, it puts up walls. 
I see now we're going to do a series on, on, on deliverance. I see that coming right now. Glory be to God. So <laughs> we talked about the fear that sometimes we put up the wall of, of the fear of failure, or the unknown. Or sometimes we're fearful to be successful. Because you know what success does? Success will also expose where you haven't been developed. This is why we have to be de- constantly developing ourselves. You ain't, you ain't good enough by your, where you at right now. Where God wants to take you, if you don't develop some disciplines, if you don't get some better stewardship abilities about what you're doing, you'll never be able to walk in certain rooms because you haven't developed certain things in you. It just ain't enough for you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Y'all hear that right. You ever, you ever, you ever uh, uh, seen back in the day somebody, man, they, every conversation was Holy Ghost. But couldn't keep a car running, couldn't pay a bill on time. Come on, talk back to me. Why? Because they never developed discipline to take care of one plus one equals two. So they got caught up in the environment of the praise and worship, but they never took that to their home. They never took that to their aspirations. They never took that to their planning. They never took that to the executing things in their lives because God is an executioner. Do y'all hear me? This may not, I I told you last week that you may put on some shoes. I may throw some shoes out there and it may fit you. They may not. The glory of God. We're going to all go into the shoe store. How about that? We ain't going to go in the foot locker. We're going to go into the rack room. You know, the rec room got a little something for everybody, don't they? Huh? <laughs> so, so, so we're going to work this out. Y'all walking with me. Y'all, we're going we're gonna to walk this out. So, so, so today I want to talk about, because uh, remember we left off with fear locks people out. But what we found out now is that in, in the next coming scripture that, that now here, here, listen to this thought. Faithful people lock God's word in. Faithful people locks God's word in. That's what we see Joshua doing, coming into the instructions of the Lord. He locks God's word in. Because he locks God's words in, guess what? He doesn't deviate from an instruction that may not seem like it makes sense to him. Because remember last week we talked about sometimes God's strategy doesn't make sense. So we said that the only way that you're going to be able to function in something that that doesn't make sense when God has instructed it is we have to lean to Holy Ghost sense. Because Holy Ghost sense will sometimes have you doing things that you don't understand, but it's God really guiding and directing you. The the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you into all understanding. So, So, you know, sometimes God will give you an instruction. And you may not understand with your finite mind by based on your regular education. So God has to allow the Holy Spirit to bring some revelation to that word of God. And then he'll bring that revelation to the word of God and that aha thing will come on. And then you'll be able to put 100% all into it because the Holy Spirit has revealed that truth to you. Somebody say, I'm going to be set free. So, so um, verse 2 of Joshua chapter 6 says, but the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho. It's king and all is strong warriors. Now, this instruction would be hard. No, I'm going to say, I'm not even going to say instruction. I'm going to say this credit. This credit right here is hard to receive when you don't lock in God's word. Because if I see that the king has a lot of power and a lot of money, and I haven't locked in God's word that guess what, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me, I won't see that, God, you're giving me somebody of this power. See, God, the faithful people lock in God's word. So when you're faithful to lock in God's word, when you, you, you can be faithful in what God instructs you to do. So now he, not, only he, not only does he tell you the king, but he tells you strong warriors. Oh, hold on, let me see. He says the land first, then he says the king, then he says the strong. So he he's basically saying the army, he's saying the land and the authority. And the authority. Have you ever communicated something to somebody like you have 
basically are bending to the authority of the devil or somebody else. Oh man, they got me. You know, they got me on lockdown, man. I can. I. I they got me down today. So if something has you down, that means that something has authority over something. If something can reposition my perspective, it has an authority. And that's why as communicators, especially of the gospel, you have to function with a type of integrity because if you understand how to communicate and you know how to articulate a, a goal, an initiative, or a revelation, a thought, or a point, and you abuse that, you can easily misuse your authority. And this is what we have seen happen a lot of times in the b local body of Christ is somebody misabused authority. So now when somebody comes with the right integrity, they put up a wall because they're still dealing with the person that misabused their authority and used it the wrong way. But this is why I put the word of God in me, okay? Faithful people. They have learned, they lock God's word in. How are they faithful? Because they understand what the word of God says. The word of God talks about how provoking one another unto love. How do we provoke one another to love? By being connected. I can't provoke nobody to love if that I'm not connected to. But guess what? God's word helps me to understand that. So now when my feeling, I feel the Lord lead me this way. I don't know why he's leading me right here. But he, I, the Lord, so now what happens is when my, my pain tries to speak louder than God's prescribed word, what happens is now the word of God will, can remind me to say, you know what? Uh, I know your pain is saying that you don't want to be connected to nobody. But how are you going to provoke one another to love? How is somebody going to provoke you unto love? Because your pain will keep you separated. Why? Because of the fear of somebody doing you like they did you in your last season. And sometimes this goes into relationships outside. Of, I ain't even talking about church. But this, this, uh, this, this, this uh, pain, this wound will enter into your personal relationship. It will enter in your uh, local church relationships. It will enter even into the people on your job. Because now, because you never got uh, healed from that wound, now it's messing with you relationally, physically, financially. It will mess with everything with you if you allow yourself to function in a wounded place. Faithful people lock God's word in. Not that you went to church 48 Sundays out of the year last year. That is not what we determine what makes you faithful. Huh? So, so we have to be taught on how to function in certain uh, lanes and in, in, in certain perspectives. So what I'm going to do as we move into Joshua, uh, same chapter 6, verses 3 to 4, we might get to 5 or 6, I don't know. But I want to talk about the why behind the strategy. I wanted to, you know, so I said, Lord, okay, I get it. Sometimes, God, your strategies don't make sense. Well, at least help me understand what certain things mean so that I can get a better understanding of why you chose the number six, why you chose seven priests instead of 12. You know, why, why, why did you choose a ram's horn? <laughs> you know, it's, it's good to question these things to get a greater understanding of God's why then his strategy will make greater sense when he gives us instruction. So what I, what, what I, what the first uh, thought that I'm going to lead into before I go, get into verse 3 and 4 is this thought right here. People not fit to intercede are not fit to lead. People not fit to intercede are not fit to lead. And, and you say, well, oh, you know, now I'm not talking about some intercessory group. I'm not talking about no prayer group. I'm talking about the created image of God that's who we are. I'm talking about the brethren and sistering of the Lord. I, 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 I'm just going to entertain a thought for a second. Joshua verse 3 it says, you and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, 
you are to march around the town seven times with the priest blowing the horn. So I, I'm giving you a, kind of a lot of little, you know, meat things here. But the first thing I want to pull from that thought about uh, people not fit to intercede, people that are not fit to intercede are not fit to leave, is work is upheld by intercession. Work is upheld by intercession. A lot of times when we think about prayer, we think about freebie. We don't think about presence. And, and what, what, what we see God really speaking and directing and, and helping us understand is the power of intercession while the work is going on. While the work is going on. So I'm going I'm to I'm deal with some things for a minute. And, and you say, Sean, wh where are you grabbing this idea of work from? Well, when you look at that six, when, uh, that, that number six, it, you got to think about it. It took six days for God to build the heavens and the earth. It, when we look at several things as we navigate through the scriptures, when we look at Leah, Jacob's first wife, she bore six children. Well, let me just say it like this. The sixth child, the sixth child, she said, God has endowed me with a good gift. Uh, Moses took the people six days. He told them, you will have to work, and you will do all the work during these six days. It says, for six years, you will sow your land and gather its yield. There were six cities, notice this, designated to the Israelites, to the alien, to the temporary residents in the midst as a place of refuge. So the work of the leaders of Israel was to upheld it was, it was upheld by the ark and the, and the presence of the Lord. So you say, Sean, what are you saying? There were six, when you deal with the tabernacle, there were six frames at the back of the tabernacle. And you say, Sean, why are you, why, what is, what is well, six, it, it deals with work. Because why you say, Sean, why does it deal with work? Because the seventh day deal with rest. But when you deal with six, uh, when you deal with this, I want you to gather in your heart and mind that, Action, walking. Notice it said, it said on the sixth, they, 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 they walked for six days. So they had to work for six days. You didn't you have to do much, but you had to work. Then when we deal with the six days, then it says the, the, the army, the, the army will walk around for six days. But before we get to the army, it was 40,000 people, too. 40,000 armed, well, they don't necessarily say armed, but when they were soldiers, they were probably armed, <laughs> okay? But this is the thing. But then it says it took seven priests, seven priests to trail. Before I get to the art, I want to deal with this seven for a second. God had, notice this when you deal with seven. God had Noah fill the ark clean, and he had to fill, he filled the ark, you know, the boat, the ark. He had him fill that with seven unclean and clean animals, male and his mate, female, or mate, some animals, you know, you got a weird setup, but, uh, but it had to reproduce, okay, it had to reproduce, so you tell, get seven, seven clean, seven unclean, seven pairs, if you will, somebody say pairs. Seven pairs, so you got to be a right and got to be a left. You got to, okay? Uh, does that make sense, everybody? Seven pairs. When Jacob was meeting his brother Esau, Jacob, he went before the family and bowed down to the ground seven times until he came to his brother. So he's showing this seven as a means of uh, bringing some completion somewhere, to, to bring in some, uh, some sense of rest or freedom, if you will. Well, I'm Y'all just, just keep walking with me. When, 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 when Pharaoh received a dream, this dream encompassed the illustration of seven cows, seven grain, and seven years of abundance, seven years of famine. So, the, notice this, the, God, the children of Israel, they had, he, he instructed them for, to eat unleavened bread will be eaten for seven days. They had to eat this unleavened bread for seven days. Somebody say seven. I'm going to keep going for a little second. 
Seven deals with being set aside, complete, or rest. Even when you deal with that seven days, uh, Moses even uh, put out a mandate that on the, I believe it's the, 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 the seventh month of the, I mean, seventh day of the, the tenth of the month, before the day or the day of the atonement, you had to, to uh, 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 that seventh, that seventh day, after that seventh day, you released the, the, the trumpet or the horn on the day of the atonement. But, but, but y'all stay with me, okay? Stay with me. Somebody say, stay with them. It was on the seventh day that God rested after crafting the heavens and the earth. Are you, are you listening to me? Now, now, watch this. It was the seventh year that after the children of Israel worked the land that they were to rest from sowing the land and allowing others to glean from the field. This is where we get Ruth and Boaz. So the reason Ruth is even in this context is because Ruth was gleaning from the field of Boaz. See, Boaz was functioning what Moses told him. He told him, listen, on the seventh year, open up your fields and allow people to come and glean from him. Because of this grace, guess what? We stand here right now because of the rest of God. So, so it's the, somebody say seven. It's really important. It was on the seventh year that Hebrew slaves were to be set free and considered debt free. So every, the, the seventh year, if you had a debt, it was paid for. You walked out debt free after that seventh year. Somebody say seven years. It deals with being set free. I want you to sit there for a second. I want you to take seven priests. And I want you to march along that thing for six days. Jesus said we are not to forgive our brother seven times, but 70 times seven. <laughs> Y'all thought I was done, didn't you? Guess what? You need to forgive. Somebody said, I need to forgive. That's right. You need to let go. Hallelujah. John a Revelator said in Revelation that he saw in the right hand of one who was seated on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. Seven represents a point where work is complete. And notice, notice this. This is, the, this is another thing the seven shows, that no one can stop the promises of God. No one or nothing can stop the promises of God. Even though the promises are complete, they're still instructions. Even though the, the, the promise, listen, listen, you, you got it. You, matter of fact, you got the uh, $1 billion. But even though you got it, there's still some instruction. Huh? Have you ever received something that didn't have any instruction? If you did and it didn't have any instructions, it wasn't worth none. Huh? Y'all know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> hey, it wasn't worth nothing. If you go in that machine and it, that's it, that's, it ain't worth nothing. It was about a quarter. <laughs> Everything that has value has some instruction. Amen. The priest, let me tell you what the priest represents. He represents intercession. The priest, G Jesus said, I'm on the right hand of the Father daily making intercession for you. Daily making intercession. Jesus is known as the high priest. But not only that, the priest, you say, Sean, where do you get this understanding that the priest represents intercession? The responsibility of the priest was to go on behalf of the people. So when you deal with an ephod, what is an ephod? An ephod is the garment that the priest had to put on in an order for him to go into the, to, to the temple to do the work of the Lord. So when they had to go in and do sacrifices on behalf of the people, under that ephod he had 12 stones on his chest. And these 12 stones represent the 12 tribes of Israel. So he had a responsibility to go and intercede on behalf of the 12 tribes of Israel or the nation of Israel. So what, what am I saying? Jesus says in the New Testament that we all are, we are chosen uh, people. We are royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. In other words, we all have a responsibility to function in the place of intercession. 
So while y'all was trying to put the leader on blast and be like, yeah, he don't need to be leading. He ain't running no Guess what? If you call on the name of Jesus Christ, you ought to have a place in intercession. Do you hear me? The Bible said he has given us all the ministry of reconciliation. What does that mean? You have the ability to reconcile or bring somebody back to a place of restoration because of your relationship. Very important for us to understand. The priest represents intercession. It, it deals with the garment. It deals with the responsibility. And notice this. Intercession isn't a past tense. It's present. It's present. Even though Jesus has done the work, it's finished, presently he's still daily making intercessions for you and I. It's present. That means you never get off the hook. Until Jesus comes back and we go singing hallelujah before the throne of God. We all, in our present state, have a responsibility to function in intercession. Moses was the high priest. Jesus was considered higher than Moses because he was the ultimate or the highest priest. Oh, well, not even deal with Moses, but the highest prophet. But when you deal with the highest priest, I believe they get an illustration of Melchizedek. But after the order of Melchizedek, Jesus is even higher than that. Do y'all hear me? So Jesus is the ultimate high priest. He's, he's doing his thing like we should be doing our thing. So we all have a responsibility. Somebody say, I have and a responsibility. All right, now, in a session, here we go, because I'm, I'm about to bring some closing. Glory be to God. In a, now, now, I'm going into the same thought here, y'all. I'm going into the same thought. In a session, it's executed with praise. I'm about to bust these, these doggone. <laughs> I don't care if they did cost $40 a piece. I'm going <laughs> to. Listen. Intercession is executed with praise. Listen what happens. The seven priests will walk ahead. I'm now in verse 4 and 5. Glory be to God. But listen. He says seven priests will walk ahead of the ark. Now, before I get into this, notice this. They will walk ahead of the ark. What does the ark represent? It represents the presence of God. So you really can't move into accurate praise until the presence of God comes into a, come, it's, it's supporting what you're doing. So, 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 so you say, Sean, hold on, hold on. Intercession. Notice that the work must be in, upheld with intercession. Now, but this is the thing. Execution of praise is the result of walking in true intercession. True intercession is always inhabited with the presence of the Lord. It's always inhabited with the presence of the Lord. So notice, he didn't say, oh, I need numbers, so give me a million people. He said, bring the Ark of the Covenant to trail the priest that's functioning in intercession. So that means we need to be intentional as we move in instruction that when we move in intercession that allow the presence of the Lord to be with us. Because if we don't, we will function in another heart. The Bible says, how do you pray amiss by not praying the will of God? So what, what happens is we'll start to pray our own particular prayer when God is saying, listen, I've given you my word so you can pray my will so you don't miss this thing. So you can actually be very successful in seeing prayer bring execution and bring in a, 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 how we say, solution by praying the will of the Father. Oh, my God, man. I'm telling you, I, 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 I got five more minutes. So, 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 so now he says, now, now, you say, Sean, where do you get this praise thing? So the, he says that the priests, they, they walk, and as they're walking, the ark is to follow behind them. Notice what happens, though. He says, as they walk, the ark is following behind them. Now, this is what is starting to make me question. If the presence of God is within my presence, the next result of any expression is praise. That's why he tells us that praise is comely for the righteous. Why is praise comely for the righteous? Because the righteous understands the presence of the Lord. David said, whatever you do, don't take your spirit from me. Why? David was a praiser. He made mistakes. Hey, he killed folks. He slept with other women. He did a lot of stuff he had no business doing, but he knew that I had to get this thing together. And the only way I can get this thing together is to, Lord, whatever you do, do not take your presence, your spirit. Don't take it from me. 
That's why I believe in, that David is an illustration of what intercession looks like when it's filled with the presence of the Lord. It's turned into praise. It's executed in praise. Listen, it, it, it didn't matter what level it was on, he was giving God praise. And I'm ter- I, all I'm saying is this, listen, sometimes it may not feel like you're winning. It may not feel like, this is a word for somebody, it may not feel like you're winning. You may not feel the goosebumps. You may not see the results. But your faith to understand that God is working all things out for the good of them that work, that work, uh, that, uh, uh, that are called according to his purpose. Guess what? I'm going to praise him in the midst of something that doesn't look right. And because I'm going to praise him in the midst of something that don't look right, I'm going to keep giving God praise. I'm going to keep lifting my hands. I'm going to keep shouting my voice. of pride. Why? Because of my praise is a result of my intercession. I know it's coming. I know. I, I just got to walk in and listen. The wall hadn't failed yet. They didn't say, God, I don't see nothing crumbling yet. I'm going to stop giving you praise. No, he, they, they gave God praise. And listen, this is what's so powerful. The wall didn't fall until he told all the people to shout. Why am I saying this? Because it ain't just good enough for the man of God to give God praise. We got to all give him praise. When we all give him praise, guess what? The wall got to fall. We all, the baby, the, 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 the epic glory be to God, the, the elder, hallelujah, whoever it may be, you give God praise. Because that's when the, we ain't by ourselves in this thing. God is taking us somewhere. Guess what? He's taking us together. Somebody holler together. Hey, he's taking us together. So listen, if you want to see some more walls fall, I dare you to move in unity. Hey, if you want to see what's the name get saved and nobody can't get through to, guess what? Your unity may break that yoke that's on their life. Because it may be the person you got uh, agreement with that may be able to have a word for them. And guess what? That word may be the word that they have not heard that caused them to get broken for what's been over their life. And they say, you know, because you was operating in unity, somebody else was able to do what you could not do yourself. That's the power of intercession. I don't stand here because somebody, hey, I stand here because somebody I didn't even have com- a conversation with was interceding on my behalf. And they say, you know, now all of a sudden I got a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm just trying to get you to understand the power of intercession. Glory be to God. It, it, it comes out in praise. It, it comes out in a way that God gets the glory. Hey, hey, it don't take an Einstein to figure out whether or not something is in field with the presence of God. Because when it's in field with the presence of God, it's going to give God glory. Hey, I know I may have put all the work into it. I may have did all these countless hours. But guess what? The simple fact that God, you did it. Guess what? You get the glory. Hey, you get the glory. Because as long as you got might in you, you are up. you are a vessel for the Lord. Amen. And I told myself, what legacy do I want to leave? I want to leave a legacy that Sean Scott gave 102,000% for the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, hey, people ask me, they say, Sean, you? they say, man, what's the secret? I said, well, let me tell you. I'm going to tell you what the secret is. They say, well, what you? I said, I mean, I don't want to know, man. I'm walking in. I said, I'm going to tell you what the secret is. First thing. I said, but the secret is this. You put a lot of great people around you. <laughs> now, 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 watch this. When you do that, you get to give God more glory. Why do you give my, God more glory? Because you look better together than you do all by yourself. Hallelujah. Hey, you can't chop me up a lot when I'm out. Hey, when I got a whole squad with me. All I'm saying. not fit to move in intercession you're not fit to lead wherever that place is find something in you to say God take my focus off of me so I can focus on somebody else hallelujah that's hard sometimes that's hard when you're hurt Hey, that's hard when you're when you when you're hungry for for what you know some personal, you know, that's hard. But if you can die to yourself. The Bible talks about how what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Hey, I don't like to lose. I 
Hey, listen, I don't like, I, hey, I would not display any competitiveness to you. But I can promise you this, I don't want to lose. <laughs> I don't want to lose. I'm going to do whatever I can to win, amen. And I don't mean that in a, you know, you know glory be God, I'm saved now. So. But I'm just saying, we, 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 we got to posture our heart and mind for this. Okay, because you know what this pandemic did do? It centralized everybody's focus to themselves. Now, the offset of you not focusing on making what you have better is that it gets worse. So if you was already selfish and you didn't try to get better, guess what? You got more selfish. Oh, y'all quiet. Why? Because I want to be seen. Because I see everybody else. I want to look like it. What's what? You know, I want, you know, you, 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 you've been lacking this attention. You've been lacking this affirmation. You've been lacking these things. So now you find yourself doing things to get attention and affirmation. And God is saying, listen, I will give you the proper attention if you just focus on my instruction. Have you ever seen in the Bible where a person was walking in obedience and praise and God didn't highlight them? Huh? You like you like the show? What King Obedient did? You 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 want you you want the diamond? And I, I'm not I'm not I ain't saying it. All he a prosperity preacher. No, all I'm saying is if you want to shine for the kingdom, function in obedience and praise. That's our response. Because I believe in some way, form or fashion, we all may have been in this place of not being fit. But God says, your, your response is obedience and praise. Amen. Somebody say obedience and praise. Come on, let's give God some praise for the word. Amen. Let's give God some praise for the word. Hallelujah. Glory. Father, we thank you right now. Lord, we praise you right now, Lord. Lord, we praise you right now, God. God, we praise you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father, receive our praise on today. Let me tell you what God wants on today. He wants the brokenhearted. My God. He wants the brokenhearted. So, so, so the Lord is saying, listen, I know there's some compartments in your heart that are malnourished. He says, listen, I want to nourish you today. I want to lead you to the well that never runs dry. Glory be to God. And, 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 and listen, that, the, if you are broken hearted today, all I have closed, and you notice some things that you just haven't been able to get over. God says, I want, I want to mend your broken heart today. If that's you, I want you to please raise your hand. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Lord, every man and woman's hands that's raised. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you will be their surgeon today, Lord. Lord, allow the Holy Spirit to go into the places, God, that man could not get a hold of. And Lord, do your work now in Jesus' name. Lord, we beck you, Lord. We plead, God. And we plead the blood of Jesus over them, God. You said when you went to the cross, you nailed every sickness and disease to that cross, God. And if, if, if bitterness is a disease, God, we need you to nail it now, God. If unforgiveness is a disease, God, we need you to nail it now, God. If cancer is the disease, God, we need you to nail it now, God. Whatever that thing may be, God, we pray in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare, God, that the great physician, God, is seeing my heart now in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. Come on, somebody shout amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, hallelujah. And, and this is the other thing. Maybe you're here. Maybe you're here. And this is a very important place of the service. Why? Because sometimes we can be in certain places and still be a foreigner. We can still be a alien. Now, this is what they did in the Old Testament. When anybody was a foreigner or an alien, all they had to do was submit 
to the Mosaic law, and they got the same benefits as those that was Jew. I mean, that was Hebrew or Israel. What does that mean for us today? All you got to do is believe. If you at a place right now, God ain't even looking for you to do no work. He ain't looking for you to do nothing. He just wants you to believe. Because what? guess what? What he has to give you has been freely given to you. And it's already done. Somebody say it's already done. And if you are here today and you have never received this measure of love from God, to where you know without a shadow of doubt that you are saved, I want you to please raise your hand if that's you. If that's you. If you're here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, glory be to God. Okay, well, let's say this. Maybe you've been in a place. I know we dealt with the heart. But maybe you've been in a place where you just want to come back to God. Somebody say, come back. If you had a place and you just want to come back to God, you say, you know what, I've been out of the lane of God and I want to come back to God. I want to position myself today in Jesus' name. If that's you, I want you to please raise your hand. Is there, is there anybody that's been and want to come back to, to the Lord? Amen. Glory be to God. Well, God is good. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God is good. Let's pray right now. In Jesus' name, I thank you right now, Lord, for that individual God that just said, listen, I want to come back, Lord. Lord, we know that your arms are wide open. There's nothing too wide, there's nothing too deep, God, that you cannot deal with. And, Lord, I thank you right now, Lord, as they receive your grace today, Lord. You said that your grace is sufficient, God, to keep us in all things, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you have kept this individual, God. You're bringing them back to you now. In Jesus' name, right in mighty name, we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. Glory be to God. Let's give God praise. Okay, last thing. If you are not a part of a body of Christ or a local body and you want to become a renovator. What a renovator is here is if you want to become a member, just so I can communicate on, on different levels for people. If you want to be a part of a church home, um, we want to definitely welcome you. If there's anybody in this place, please raise your hand so we can help. Make sure somebody gets with you and love on you. Glory be to God. There's a lot of relationship going on, so everybody almost in this place has been pre-registered, and we already got your information, and there's relationship already. Is God good or what? That's the power of technology. Ain't that something? So God knew the word you was going to need before you got here because he knew you was going to show up. No, we knew. God knew, but we, we. But, but anyway, God is good. Listen, let's, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you right now. We thank you, God, for giving us the opportunity to walk in a more solid and foundational position as an intercessor, God, for the kingdom of heaven. Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for the blood, God, that cleanses us from all unrighteousness, Lord. We thank you, God, for even men in the broken hearted, God. We thank you, God, for the person that came back unto you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we just ask right now that you, your countenance will shine upon each and every person in this place. When they go to their respective places, Lord, keep them from hurt, harm, or danger. We will rebu rebuke now sickness and disease, God. We thank you, Father, that they will walk in the health of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout amen. Come on, somebody shout amen. Shout amen. Hey.